you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, welcome to our first night of virtual home church. Uh, last week, Jeremy reminded us, you know, in times of crisis and chaos, the church has always been on the front lines, meeting Jesus on the waters of chaos, being the people of God, the presence of God to those who need it most. Um, and so really this week or this, the next couple of weeks, it's about us. I don't know, as you all discern individually what it means to be the church, as the staff team was reflecting on it, we were just reminded of Acts 2.42 and just the, the call to devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching, to, to meet with each other daily, to pray with each other daily, um, to spur one another on in mission daily. We just felt like this was an important space for us. Um, and so really what we're after in this time as, as important as the teaching may or may not be, really it's about us being together, about us interacting and interfacing with each other. And so these meetings are designed to be short. We don't want to keep you here forever, um, maybe till 845. And we'll kind of go through different points of, of small group and engagement and a little bit of content. Um, and we'll, we'll carry through from there. So Bree already gave you a quick word on etiquette Zoom, but as we were just reflecting on it and thinking about it as a team, we felt like maybe there are five key ways that as Zoom participants going forward, and maybe even as you consider Zoom for your microchurch, uh, five ways that you can maximize Zoom for your microchurch. So first um, is, is be on time, right? So like, I mean, kind of speaking to the choir here, but being on time is important, especially in this space, because we only have 45 minutes. So, excuse me, if you show up late, well, then you kind of miss significant chunks of what's going on. Um, and then even if you show up late to other meetings, you spend some time trying to figure out, okay, what did I miss? What, where am I? Where are we in this meeting? So the first thing is just being on time. And the second thing, we would just encourage you to not only just be on time, but allow yourself to be seen. So, um, you know, earlier we were talking with Catherine. I mean, you know that she's had her own health issues and health scare going on where she's had to be isolated and quarantined. And she has said that, you know, the thing that has helped her the most in those times of quarantining and not being able to be physically present with people is to be able to see each other and to be able to look each other in the eye through, you know, uh, a screen and through a camera and to feel connected. It's part of the, the reciprocity that we feel like is important. And so allow yourself to be seen but also know that if your camera is on, you are seen, right? So if you're like looking bored or if you're like picking your nose or if like you kick your dog or something like that, we will see that uh, in, in front of everybody. So you might not want to do that. So just be mindful um, of how you, you do your camera. Third thing we would say is just be engaged. Uh, so in, in the chat, like we already mentioned, it's a great place to just say, hey, man, this is really sticking out to me. Uh, it's a great place to react because the fourth thing we would say is just, you know, in being muted and knowing when to use your voice. Uh, because we are recording these spaces, if you unmute yourself in the large group gathering and you say something, immediately the camera shifts to you and everyone else hears it. If you've got something going on in the background uh, in terms of noise, we will hear that as well. So just allow yourself to, to be muted. Um, in the large group and then in the small group, allow yourself to, to speak and interact with people as much as you want. But then lastly, we would say have fun. If you have the gift of humor and you like to make people laugh, do that. Tell each other jokes, uh, make each other laugh. We're as formal as this might feel, it's, we just also want to feel like a living room as close as we can um, to just being with each other in the same space. So we'll encourage you in that way. Um, so before we kind of dive into a time of, of meditation and, and reflection, kind of what we're after in these spaces, we want to do a little bit of responsive theology. That is to say, we want to look at the, the, the times that we're in, the current situation that we're dealing with, and, and to kind of analyze that from a theological standpoint, it kind of the study of God. What does God have to say about this? What is the current moment that we're in? How does that interact with the transcendent nature of God himself? Um, and so we're going to look at things that are maybe kind of common, things that you already know to be true, themes that you are, would not be unfamiliar with in Scripture. But maybe because of the time that we're in, it might seem a little bit different. And that's what we're kind of looking at. Like, how does this current situation change 
our perspective on some of the things that we're so used to and accustomed to. Kind of in talking about responsive theology, tonight we're going to begin our series by looking at the tree of life. And trees actually have a really interesting, uh, I guess, role throughout scripture. Um, you know, uh, I think after God and man, I think trees are maybe the third most mentioned thing in the Bible. And what's actually fascinating about that is that the word for tree in Hebrew um, gets used for different things throughout the course of the Old Testament. So when you look at Moses and the burning bush, the word for that actually is also tree. And when you look at uh, the woods or something like that, that is also tree. Um, and even when we talk about Jesus on the cross, we often say he was nailed to the tree, right? Um, and, and trees have this place where they're kind of an important place of decision, of characters who are wrestling with something in scripture, being around a tree and either uh, making some sort of obedience uh, move towards God or making a disobedient move away from God. Um, and so we actually have this video from the Bible Project that I'll share with you guys. Awesome. So yeah, as it was in the beginning, so it shall be in the end. The Bible begins with the tree, and we see it again in the new heaven and the new earth. Uh, and, but in the in-between, this tree of life is made available, it's available to us through Jesus. And like they said, we're not only able to partake of the tree, but we're called to be part of it. And part of that means partaking in the life of, in the life of God, allowing him to define for us what is good and what is bad. As mentioned in John 15, Jesus is a vine and we are the branches. And when we are connected to that vine, we bear fruit that will last. And so that's not a, an unusual concept to us, but I think what it means for us in today, uh, in this current time, it comes with tensions, right? So Adam and Eve chose to define for themselves what is good and what is bad. And if we're honest, we still do that today. Uh, and the question that we have to wrestle with is what does it look like for God to define what is good and bad during this current time that we're in, right? How can we remain connected to the tree, even in quarantine, even as we help those that we know and those within our microchurch also remain connected to that same tree. Uh, another tension that we have to wrestle with is that we're called to extend life into the world, right? Like that's part of what the tree of life does. And yet, how can we do that while being in isolation and under quarantine? What does it look like to be trees of life in a world characterized by sickness and death? And so all those are live questions that we have to wrestle with, but for the sake of tonight and for timing, we're going to send you into a time of small groups, maybe just for uh, 10 minutes or so, to kind of talk about, one, in the midst of a uh, pandemic and crisis, in what ways are you tempted to define good and evil or good and bad? And then secondly, how can you and your microchurch be trees of life in a time of sickness and death? And so I think Bree will go ahead and send us into small groups. We'll spend some time there and we'll come back together shortly after. Uh, hopefully that, that time was good for, for some processing. Uh, maybe I'll just kind of end with a, a brief call and then a little bit of time of, of reflection. Cool. So maybe I'll just end by kind of a brief word and then we'll uh, spend some time in reflection. But I think when I look at this video, the thing that continues to jump out to me is that there's this choice that is always offered and a choice that gets made, right? So in the garden, there's a moment uh, where Adam and Eve have a choice to choose between saying yes to the life that God has to offer them or choosing to define good and evil for themselves, right? And the people of Israel, that's the constant struggle of their life. And for us, that is the same, the same thing. We are always being offered a chance to enter into the life that God has for us or to, or to decide good and evil for ourselves. And if we're honest, we often think we know best, right? So our kids, our finances, our careers, houses, even the lack thereof, sometimes we think we know best. And even in the moments where we think we trust God, uh, all it really takes is a crisis to happen for us, for us to grab the reins all over again right? We grab from the wrong tree, we define good and evil on our own terms, and in turn, we offer death to ourselves and to the rest of the world. Um, you know, recently, 
as many of you know, my wife is pregnant with our first child. And one of the things that I've been feeling more recently is just this itch to like move or to like have a, a house where this kid could actually like grow up and walk around in. And, you know, I've been on Zillow because I haven't really been on social media. So like Zillow has become the new Instagram for me, like looking at houses and all this other stuff. But if you were to ask me, you know, how much time I actually spend in prayer, listening to God, okay, where should I live? What should our lives look like? What kind of house we should even have? It would actually pale in comparison to how much time I've spent on Zillow. Because honestly, if I'm honest with myself, I think I know what's best. I use my own logic, my own experience, my own rationale to make decisions. And then what will happen is that then I'll say, okay, this is God's will for my life. This is God's decision for my life. And that's not actually true, right? So we're often tempted to do that, to rely on our logic, our own experience, and then rubber stamp God's approval and say, yes, this is, this is what he's decided for me. And we have to repent of that, guys. In order to actually be the tree of life to the world, it begins by repenting of the ways that we rely on ourselves, the way we rely on our own logic, our own rationale, or even the experience of others to define for us what is good and evil. And in this time of pandemic and sickness, I think the question that we're wrestling with uh, and the ways that we're tempted to decide what is good and bad is that question of social distancing and isolation right? Like you, the law says, or the higher ups, the powers that be say, you need to be a certain distance away from the people around you. Uh, and yet, what does that mean for our neighbors who are struggling, who are hurting, who are dealing with very real issues, and no one can reach into them, speak into their lives? We have to wrestle with that tension. We have to pray and listen and discern, okay, God, how would you define what is good and evil in this time? What is good and bad? And how do I choose from your tree versus my own false tree of life? Uh, and allow that to be the thing that guides my decisions, that allows me to offer life to the rest of the world. And so in the same way that Adam and Eve were given a choice, we too are given a choice. Will we define what is good and bad for ourselves or will we listen to the voice of God and allow him to speak into some of the things that we're experiencing currently? And so I just want to give a little bit of time, um, not a whole lot, uh, just for you to, to reflect on that, like to listen for the voice of God. What is he saying to you and what might he be calling you to do in response to some of the things that we've talked about tonight.